total dissolved solids refers to the quantity of dissolved solids in the pool water, i.e. The, num uh, the amount of chemicals that are dissolved in the pool water. And it's a useful test to do once a week to make sure that you're not allowing the level of chemical pollution uh, to go out of control with your pool. The way it's done is you take, you measure the total dissolved solids of the mains incoming water and you do the same with the pour water and you look at the difference between the two. So here I've got a sample of mains incoming water and I'm going to show you how to, to test for it. What you use is what's called a TDS meter and the way that this works is take the top off and you've got um, the measuring um, at, at end of things here you dip that into into pool uh, into well pool or, or mains water and what it does is it measures the electrical conductivity of the sample that you've collected the thing here is that is that water doesn't conduct electricity it's the dissolved chemicals in water that conduct the electricity through it water in and of itself doesn't conduct electricity so the more electrically conductive a sample of water happens to be, the more chemicals that there are dissolved in that sample. Um, so it's a, um, a case of turning it on and basically all you, all you need to do is dip it into a sample and uh, the result will be shown in parts per million. So I'll, I'll bring this at 277 I think it's saying. So I'm hoping that will focus properly to allow you to, to see that it's 277 parts per million. So, and what you want to make sure, if you're buying one of these, for the, uh, if you're buying one for the first time, do make sure that it measures in parts per million, or else you're just going to have a, a bit of a... Um, it's inconvenient to have to convert because you do get some of these TDS meters that measure in parts per trillion or, or parts per thousand and it just becomes a hassle then to have to convert that into parts per million which is the unit of measurement that we're interested in. So let's say we've got 277 parts per million mains. And you need to make sure that you, you are testing from a mains tap rather than, for example, a tank-fed tap. Mains outlets are usually much higher pressure than, than tank-fed. So that can be a way of, of getting an idea of whether it's a tank-fed or mains-fed tap is the, is the pressure uh, or ref, referring to a schematic. But what you do is you take another sample from the pool. Uh, don't happen to have a pool here that I can take a sample from but let's just use a, uh, an imaginary figure let's say that the the water that you've got in your pool you take your sample you measure it in exactly the same way and you get a reading of 1577 um, for example what you'd be able to work out it, is that there's a difference of 1300 parts per million from the so 277 came in from the mains that that went into the pool initially and then on top of that another 1300 went in to make it up to 15 1577 so what does that mean well basically you've got to sort of consider well what is this the, what 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 explains what this 1300 is because um, some of it will be uh, poor water treatment chemicals such as your chlorine uh, or bromine if you're using bromine and then whatever chemical you use to adjust the pH level and control that that will be contributing to it as well but probably not much so for chlorine for example uh, pools would it only usually have somewhere between one and sort of five parts per million of chlorine in there and we're talking about 1300 so it's not really much most of that is going to be bather added pollution in fact 
So urine, sweat and all these cosmetics such as deodorants and um, hair gel and products like that, bathers are basically introducing quite a lot of chemical pollution into the water. And so the industry um, standard here is to try and keep this difference between the mains water and the pool water, that difference needs to be lower than a thousand. So whatever your mains TDS is, add on a thousand to that and then that is your upper limit. Try and get it as low as you can though, um, because the higher that gets, the worse your pool water quality is going to be. And high TDS levels does contribute to corrosion as well. So it's not a, and when you think about it as well, when you, when you realize what makes up most of that um, difference here, the 1300 in this example, when you realise what it is, of course it's desirable to get rid of it or not allow it to get that bad in the first place because this example would be would be um, sort of something that uh, your average pool would want to do something about. So the, the approach to take here is to, well there's two approaches to take, prevention first and then mitigation afterwards so prevention how do you prevent TDS levels getting that high in the first place you basically take um, you get people to take pre swim showers before they go into the pool so instead of them washing off their chemical pollution in your pool they wash it off in the showers um, and it goes to to drainage without it getting into your pool it won't get rid of it all of it but it will get rid of uh, the lion's share of the chemical pollution that bathers are adding then that's going to allow you to not have, because they're going to be getting rid of bacteria as well, so you're not going to have to use as much chlorine then. And then if you're not using as much chlorine, that's not having as much of an impact on the pH level, and then you're not having to use as much chemicals, that, uh, uh, as many pH control chemicals. So there's a, there's a benefit here, there's a knock-on benefit to getting people to take pre and showers. If, though the, uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you've got TDS levels that are much higher than you'd like and you want to bring them down the way to do that is by dilution by getting fresh water in there there's a common saying the, the, the solution to chemical pollution is dilution so get fresh water going in adding more chemicals is not going to work you can't add chemicals to get rid of chemical pollution adding chemicals is only going to further contribute to chemical pollution there's a there's a there's a, a guideline figure of diluting with 30 liters of water per bather per day, but it really depends on 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 how much chemical pollution you're allowing to get into the pool into the fir in, in the first place. For example, if 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 people aren't taking pre swim showers, you're going to have to maybe dilute even more than 30 liters of water per bather per day, as compared to a pool where they are making pe people take pre swim showers. Maybe they don't have to dilute with 30 litres of water per bather per day. It's basically whatever, whatever it takes to get that figure under control, to get that difference between the mains and the pool under control. Uh, and the way to dilute is simply draining off a bit of water from the pool and topping it back up with fresh mains incoming water. Um, a good way of doing that is to do a rinse cycle with your backwash. Um, not you might not you can do it by doing a full backwash because when you're backwashing you're you're discharging quite a lot of water to drain and that needs to be topped up with fresh water from the mains but there are certain cases where you don't want to do a backwash you want to leave the filter uh, the, uh, the filter beds intact but you still need to drain water so the rinse cycle basically has water going in at the top of the filtration system and out at the bottom and out to drainage uh, without actually disturbing the sand bed. But by hook or by crook, the way to reduce TDS levels is get fresh water coming in off the mains. But I think it's probably w well worth your while to focus on prevention just as much as you focus on mitigation and actually get into, uh, try and develop a culture within your site where people are taking pre swim showers. Easier said than done, depending on the type of facility that you're that you're operating but there are significant benefits to be had um, and it makes your life much easier as a pool plant operator to prevent the problem rather than try and fix it once you once you've allowed the problem to get out of hand